Hi, everybody. Uh, I'll start off by saying there's a non-zero chance that I'm going to get interrupted by one or the other of the dogs, but it is what it is. That's what life is. Um, I had been really struggling with um, cravings for sweets and that kind of thing, even though I was, when I would cave, it would mostly be keto type stuff, um, but still that's not good for you. It's not food and it can still raise your I don't know what it raises. I've forgotten all the terminology now. They're insulin, blood sugar, both, one than the other, right? I've watched so many videos, why can't my brain absorb it? In any case, it does something not great to you. But then I had a very busy day, was it on Saturday, I think, or Friday? I can't remember what it was, but <clears throat> my mind was taken off of all of that. And I had a very clean day, nutritionally, as a matter of fact. And then after that, the I would say since then my cravings for a sweet taste, to, uh, they're about 90, 95% gone. Occasionally there's a little twinge of, don't you want a little something? But it hasn't been where like I wanna gnaw my arm off. And this tells me because the cravings were so bad and I had not been eating sugar. I'm not gonna say not at all. I, I would, I don't know if my husband had a, who's metabolically healthy by these organic dark chocolate bars or whatever. He would offer me one square and, and I would have a square and, and stuff like that. But <clears throat> I don't think that's what was doing it. it. It was the caving to the keto treats more often than that, that still is not good for the body and still causes some kind of response and was still feeding the sugar cravings. And then I watched a video that Carnivore Doctor on her channel recently uploaded that was really the hard truth about sweet flavors and that they they just need to not be passing your tongue. They need, and I think I wanna play that video on loop. I reposted it on my YouTube channel so you can see it there if you want. Uh, it's worth watching and it was, she tells the truth. Uh, about sweet tastes and about keto sweeteners and and that kind of thing and and you know I had reached a point where I knew that I was fooling myself about these things and so then I wasn't fooling myself anymore I was just in outright rebellion because I wanted I, you know I don't know like I yeah, I wanted to eat these things and and uh, the addiction is bad. That just tells me how much, that it's an addiction, an addiction, because I'm walking around with all of this knowledge, years really of knowledge about this kind of thing. And having done, I mean, I have lost lots of weight two times and, uh, and, and more than that, if you count early in my adulthood, uh, there are things I know, I know these things, but you know, while knowledge is power, it's not, nece it doesn't necessarily translate into your ability to keep it together all of the time. You actually have to apply these things. I, I hate to say willpower, I'm not sure that's exactly it, but, but discipline, I don't know if discipline, if we really think of those as the same thing, but, um, a, a repeated commitment over and over again throughout the day. Um, no, eating something sweet flavored is not what I'm doing. That's not what I'm doing right now. I really had to tell myself that uh, over and over again previously. However, since when I had that really busy day, uh, had nothing sweet at all, uh, because I didn't think about it, I was too busy. And then really that seemed to calm down quite a bit the cravings that I was having for sweet flavors. I haven't had keto treats or anything like that. I've only had beef, eggs, <clears throat> a little bit of bacon, a couple of tablespoons of shredded cheese, but I mean, that's a couple tablespoons over four days. Um, dairy is inflammatory to me, so I really have to watch it. Um, and then yesterday I was kind of ketovore, not carnivore, and I had uh, canned salmon with uh, uh, all, uh, no, avocado oil mayo, and it was it was the primal mayo that was very clean. Uh, you know, it bugs me when I see the avocado oil mayos on the shelf, and they're full of soybean oil. They like, I don't know, what do they do? Pour a drop of avocado oil, avocado oil in there and say, you know, boom, here's avocado oil mayo. No, no, no. So uh, I'm I'm kind of 
angry that these companies are doing that and that people aren't reading the ingredients on these jars and they buy something labeled avocado oil mayonnaise and it is it is still soybean oil mayonnaise or canola oil mayonnaise and those are highly inflammatory and I'm going off on a diversion right now but I wanted to mention that if you buy avocado oil mayo make sure look at the ingredients look at the ingredients make sure it's the oil and maybe vinegar and, and vinegar and eggs uh, you know, whatever else, super clean <clears throat> ingredients that you recognize and pronounce. <clears throat> no seed oils, no processed oils like soybean or canola. In any case, so that's that. So I did have that yesterday uh, just because I had just really thoroughly cleaned my stove and I didn't want to cook any beef because <laughs> I didn't want to clean up again. Uh, so I, I just had this basically salmon salad with the canned salmon and the avocado oil mayo. Uh, my dog is ringing the bell at the back door wanting to go out, but she's just come from inside. She comes inside so that she can ask to go back out. I'm just yammering. There she is again. Hang on, Luna. Hang on. I'll let you out. So that's that. So I'm feeling pretty good, except I am tired. I was tired yesterday and today, and I wonder if it's daylight savings time. And hang on, baby girl. I wonder if it's, maybe I'll take you with me. I wonder if it's daylight savings time or if it's um, that I am uh, withdrawing, trying to burn ketones. My body's trying to make that switch. Maybe that's it. My super biohack interested 19 year old son was over this morning and we were having coffee together and he was talking to me about that he's like i think it's just that you were not in ketosis and that you were um that your body's trying to switch over now since it's deprived of carbs um, even again, I want to stress these were sort of keto carbs or these were, um, you know, keto friendly sweeteners in these treats, but that, I mean, he might be right. And so I guess I'll find out if I have any kind of a switch over, hopefully today, if it's not daylight savings time, or if it's not actual sleep deprivation, um, S Saturday night, overnight into Sunday, the night of spring forward, I in fact had horrible insomnia and only got one or two hours of sleep. Uh, I had to miss church because I hadn't slept at all and couldn't function Sunday morning, so I just went back to bed. Maybe this is residual from that. I also wonder, you know, when I eat super clean and can feel my metabolism rev up, often at the beginning, <clears throat> I do experience insomnia. And I know that that's common, actually. So I just have to deal with that. That's a little bit of a trade-off there. And I'm curious if you have experienced insomnia as part of this process, if you're doing keto, ketovore, carnivore, that kind of thing, have you battled insomnia? Uh, and tell me about that. I would like to hear other people's experience. I have not had insomnia the past two nights, but I have been tired during the day. So we'll see what that is. Um, but other than that, I can already feel inflammation uh, around my uh, rib cage and abdomen where that visceral fat is. I can, that's different now, just in, in a couple days, I can feel the difference there. See, I mean, it's amazing. Cause again, I wasn't eating cake or, you know, cookies or anything like that. It's, it's been uh, the, those dang keto treats. And I knew it while I was doing it and I made videos crying <laughs> about it. You know, so that just goes to show. So I need to keep those out of my mouth and, uh, and not remind my body that they even exist. And so if I can do that, I might have overcome a hump here. I might have, in which case, I had lost a lot of weight two years ago. I had then gained some back dealing with a difficult family situation. And then I lost that. And then it crept back on because I started allowing myself dairy, nuts, keto treats, clearly bad for me. Removing the most of the dairy helped some. Removing all of the nuts and nut flavored things helped some. I think I have to treat myself like I'm allergic to nuts. I, I think I do. That's so sad because nuts are lovely, but I've got to act like I'm allergic to them. They are so inflammatory to me. And I need to really watch it on the dairy. <clears throat> uh, and, then, and then 
probably act like I'm allergic to the keto treats because you know a lot of those also have are made up with nut based products that's probably maybe another part of it is that there's so many um, uh, you know like you know keto peanut butter thing obviously duh Donna that's inflammatory because it's got peanuts in it or almond flour or almond butter that kind of thing so those have nut products in them plus probably the insulin response from the sweetener taste fooling the body getting and the body gets ready for sugar imagine that's all what's going on and but now I seem to have like I said overcome a hump so we're gonna see how this goes uh, so I had that slow creep of weight gain and then a lot of psychological torment for a few weeks now trying to really deal with that and so right now I'm hoping and praying that I've I've crossed over some kind of a hump and that as we progress into the spring where I've got to fit back into my clothes that then I can begin to release this inflammation that I have gained um, so that I can fit into the cute adorable wardrobe I had last spring and summer. <laughs> I'm not buying new clothes. I'm not buying new clothes. I have a closet full of clothes that are adorable and uh, that's something I've really got to be disciplined with myself about. So anyway, I just wanted to check in uh, on my tiny little channel and thanks for following me. If you liked this, you could click the thumbs up button if you wanted. Um, if you're watching this and you're not a subscriber, you could subscribe if you wanted. Uh, and I just like connecting with other people on this same journey as myself. And so thanks for watching. And if you, um, want to know more about this and are like, what is she talking about? And you've stumbled across this. I have been inspired by and have learned a lot from Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Bart Kay, Carnivore Doctor. All of these people are evidence-based, science-based, uh, and they re reference studies. They reference good studies. They talk about bad studies and why they're bad. They talk about biological processes and what's actually happening in your body at a metabolic level, at a hormonal level, at a cellular level. They talk about these things at that level. So that's why I like them. And then in terms of inspiration, I'm really getting a lot out of watching, let's see, is it Nate Barbecue Kip, Kip, Barbecue Kip? Oh gosh, I'm embarrassed. I just watched his video. He's fantastic. It's got barbecue in his name. I will find it and I will post the link to his YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, he's a family man. He's got a little toddler daughter and um, he's really wanting to live a long and healthy life for his daughter and be the best father he can be. And he knows a lot about cast iron and I'm, oh my gosh, I'm such a cast iron fanatic. I, I love cooking in cast iron and he knows a lot about that and he knows a lot about properly cooking meat so that it's phenomenal and so uh, I highly recommend giving him a follow. His YouTube channel as of the time that I'm recording this is just a couple of weeks old and he has like I don't know almost 3,000 followers or something. Anyway I want to give him a hug. He's from Alabama. I'm from Texas. If I go to Alabama maybe I'll look him up and ask him if I can just give him a hug and get a selfie with him. He's a cool guy. And then Carnivorous Me, Amanda, she's also amazing how she's turning her life around and she's doing it with the loving and beautiful support of her husband. I think his name is Scott. Is that right? Uh, and, and they are just a beautiful, adorable couple and smart. They're smart people and she's not perfect on her journey, but she's been up front. But I mean, not perfect, but pretty amazing. Amanda is pretty amazing. And I, Amanda, you may never see this video, but if you are, girl, you blow me away. My parents live in Washington state. My dad is also on carnivore and he's kind of put my mom on keto. Um, so they live further away from you, Amanda, if you're watching, and you probably aren't. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna tell my dad about your meetups in case he ever wants to go to one of them. And then, uh, let's see, so there's Carnivorous Me, this uh, barbecue, kip, barbecue, whose name I'll get in the comments, and then, uh, or in the description. And then, uh, who else am I watching? There's a couple of others that I have found very small, oh, Carnivore Quest, Carnivore Quest. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, Larry and Cassie. They're, uh, it's, it's their cooking tutorials and all of that amazing. And then just their journey uh, together and how much they love each other. <laughs> I just love it. And what they've overcome in their lives. Oh man, I just love it.
Uh, so I'm, I'm in their group on Facebook, as a matter of fact. And then there's a couple of other small channels. I think there's one with Kim's Wellness and Spiritual Journey. And then another one I just saw, and I'm so sorry, I can't remember her YouTube channel name, but I will post that in the description of this, this as well. So if you want to learn more about this journey, um, and get inspired by it, or if you're already on it and looking for more inspiration, then I'll post those other channels in the description of this. And we should all like be together and be making our own YouTube videos, even if you only get like 20 followers on yours, but you're at least sharing with a tribe and we can cheer each other on and support each other. Uh, and I wanna address one other thing that Amanda addressed really well and that um, Dr. Ken Berry and his wife Nisha addressed in their Monday Night Live this week, and that is the idea of moderation. I've gone on a m many a wacky diet, and I'm sure my friends kind of give me the side eye. I don't really care. I have to do what's right for me. I have done juicing. I have done extended no food fast, and the, I, those have been fine. Extended fasts are great. Um, I have long time ago when I was in graduate school, I tried veganism. I've tried light meat, high veggie, mostly vegetarian. I've tried, um, as I said in another video, I did HCG. I've done HCG actually a handful of times, and I'm don't hate me. I'm a fan of HCG. I'm a fan of that diet. Uh, that I can't shed a lot of weight with anything else, even carnivore, keto, I do know that. So uh, HCG helped get a lot of dangerous weight gain off of me. Uh, but if I'm wanting to lose smaller amounts of weight or maintain, uh, then I've got to be carnivore, ketovore, mostly carnivore because some of us are not moderators. And I have people who never battled weight gain talking about moderation. Well, why can't these people just eat like me and then they'll be fine because I don't have a weight problem. Well, buddy, maybe you are a moderator. Maybe you're great. Maybe you have never had a broken metabolism, but some of us are not wired that way. We're not wired that way. I don't know if you understand what happens to me if I have brown rice. It, it wakes up this monster in me that's a sugar monster. It just does. It makes my body want to burn sugar and seek as much sugar as possible. And I can't, I have, I'm not gonna say I can't, I have great difficulty moderating that. And then that just overtakes my whole life and then self-loathing. And then I start excusing things. Um, well, maybe it's better like if I have a keto treat instead of the brown rice, that's just this slippery slope. I've gotta have some hard walls uh, around me in terms of what I choose because I'm not wired to be a moderator and I'm not wired, well, I, I have a broken metabolism. It's just, it's broken. And I believe that over time I can fix it, but fixing it means also not exposing it to the trauma of bad nutritional choices or at least nutritional choices that damage me. So I've got to put some hard walls on myself and everything and honestly I'm, I'm thankful to my husband who has a fantastic metabolism and he's 10 years older than me and he's really supportive like in perfect ways he never tells me what to eat he never judges if I if I do something um, but he also knows that I want to um, make best choices for myself and there was a discussion last week about you know if he wanted me to bring if, if I wanted him to bring me something home from the store and he said, I'm not gonna get you a, a treat because I know that you don't want to do that. But he said it so gently. He didn't say it to correct me or to tell me what to do. It was perfect. How did I get this guy that knows how to talk about those things in a perfect way? I don't feel like he's ever trying to boss me around, but he's gently remindful and gently supportive and all of that. He's just great. So uh, it's very helpful when we have partners in our lives that are supportive of what we want to do, even if they are not doing the same thing. So I've been going on for almost 20 minutes now. Um, and so if you are going through any of the same thing, let me know in the comments because I would love to really keep interacting with other people on the same or similar journey. And I'm going to go now because I have other stuff I got to get done today, but thanks for listening.